In this example, we're going to analyze a three-phase circuit from a power perspective. Generally speaking, when you're dealing with large power consuming loads, the loads are specified in terms of their power demand. Of course, you can specify a load in terms of either its impedance or its power demand. And again, generally speaking, large power consuming devices are going to be specified in terms of their power requirements. So in this case, we've got a Y-connected load. We're told that it's a 15 horsepower three-phase motor with a power factor of 0.85. First of all, that 15 horsepower is the total power. When you're, when you're looking at a motor, the 15 horsepower rating on it is the total power that you can get out of the shaft. Now, because it's a three-phase motor, a third of that power will come from each phase. And so let's just go ahead and say then that the power per phase is equal to the power total divided by 3, which in this case is 15 divided by the three phases, we're getting 5 horsepower per phase. Now we convert that to um, watts, because all of our calculations are going to be in watts, and we find then that the power associated with a phase is equal to 3730 watts per phase. All righty. Our task is to find out what the current requirements are going to be for this motor, given its power, and also told that the line voltage, the voltage from the A line to the B line, is 480 volts. Now let's understand what this is saying. We have a single phase, this Z sub L, a single phase, which is going to be demanding 3,730 watts. And each of those other two phases are going to require them also. But as we've done in the past, we're going to just analyze one phase, and then we can deduce the voltages and currents in the other phases by simply adding or subtracting 120 degrees from the A phase. But this power here is related to the voltage across this phase, which is VAN. The voltage across that is VA. In. And the current here in this Y-connected load is just the line current. It's the current coming from the source to the load, I sub little a, big A. So this power that's being drawn is going to be related to the voltage across the phase and the current through the phase. This is what we're being asked to determine. We're going to need some way of relating this the voltage across here and the current, but we're also going to need to know what the voltage across the phase is. We're going to have to calculate that because they've given us the voltage from one leg to the other. So let's go ahead and do that first of all. Let's determine what VAN is. We have seen that the line voltage, the voltage between two lines, in this case VA to B, is greater than the individual voltage or the voltage across the individual phases, either VAN or VBN. And we went through the calculations and we found that the line voltage is equal to the square root of 3 times the amplitude of the phase voltage, VAN, and that the line voltage leads VAN by 30 degrees. Well, this time we're not given VAN, we're given VAB, so we can get VAN from VAB by going VAN is equal to VAB divided by the square root of 3, angle 30 which in this case VAB is given to us as 480 volts. Now, no reference angle is specified, but since this is what's given to us, let's go ahead and specify it. Let's just call that our reference angle of 0, and we'll take that VAB divided by the square root of 3 angle 30, and when we do that, we get the VAN is equal to 277 angle minus 30. So, obviously, the amplitude, the magnitude of VAN is less than the magnitude of VAB, and we see that VAN is lagging VAB by 30 degrees. Just as an aside, these numbers, 480 and 277, those are common numbers that you find in three-phase systems. 480 volts line voltage, the voltage from one line to another, is a common three-phase voltage available from power companies. And what we see is that 480 and 277 are related to each other, 
277 is 480 divided by the square root of 3, or 277 is the phase voltage, the voltage across the phase, associated with a line voltage of 480 volts. All right, now we know what VAN is, the voltage across that. We're trying to find I sub little a big A. How do we relate those two? Well, there's at least two different ways, and there's probably more than that. Let's just list a couple of them. We know that S, the complex power associated with this, is equal to V, the voltage across the device, and which in this case is VAN, and that's phasor VAN, times the conjugate of the current flowing through it. The current flowing through it is I sub little a big A conjugate. So <clears throat> this relationship relates the complex power to VAN and the current through it. Now another one is power P, the average power, is equal to the amplitude of VAN, that's capital AN, times the amplitude of the current, I sub little a big A, times the cosine of the angle between them, or the power factor angle. Either of these ways will work. In my mind, this one is a little more, requires a little more intuition because we've got to worry about angles and, and uh, getting the right angle here. For starting out, this one I think is maybe a little more direct. Let's go ahead and use this relationship here to calculate the current. In order to do that, we need to know what S is, because what we're saying is that I sub little a big A, the line current, is equal to S divided by V A N conjugate. We know what V A N is. We've got to get S. We're given P, and we're given the power factor. All righty, how do we get S from P? Well, we know that P is equal to the magnitude of S times the cosine of theta. Therefore, the magnitude of S is equal to P divided by the cosine of theta. The cosine of theta, that's just our power factor. P, we found to be 3730. So that's equal to 3730 divided by 0.85. And our magnitude of S turns out to be 4388. 4388, and the units of S are volt amps. That gives us the magnitude of S. We need the angle of S. Well, the angle of S is just the power factor angle. So theta is equal to, did we already do that? No, we haven't already done that. Theta is equal to the arc cosine of the power factor, 0.85 which is equal to um, 3179, 31.79 degrees. Now we have to ask ourselves, is that angle positive or negative? Well, it's a motor. In a motor, good old Eli, a motor is an inductive load. In a motor, in an inductive load, the current lags the voltage. Well, theta is equal to theta v minus theta i. The current is less than, the phase of the current is less than the phase of the voltage, so this difference here is going to be a positive number, and theta will then be positive, make that a positive, 31.79 degrees. And we have then S is equal to 4388 angle 31.7 9 degrees. Alrighty, now we can go ahead and calculate the line current. We've got S, we've got V sub A, we're going to have to conjugate the quotient of those two, but we've got then that this quotient is equal to 4388 angle 31.79 divided by V A N, which was 277 angle negative 30 and we've got to conjugate that to get I sub little a big A. And when we do that, we get I sub little a big A is equal to 4388 divided by 277 is 15.84. Now, this division tells us to take the angle of the numerator, subtract the angle of the denominator. Well, 31.79 minus a minus 30 gives us a positive 30, or a positive 61, positive 61.79 degrees. 
But that has got to be conjugated. So we find then that I sub little a big A for this load is equal to 15.84 angle negative 61.79 degrees. That's what we've been looking for. That is the current going through and driving this first phase, this A phase of that motor. Anytime you do a calculation and you go through all this, you, you really need to stop and just ask yourself, is this consistent with what I know? Do a consistency check. We know it's an inductive load. Therefore, the angle of the current has got to be less than the angle of the voltage across it. Well, we found the angle of the voltage across it to be negative 30, and we're now finding that the angle of the current is negative 61.79 degrees. So sure enough, this current is lagging the voltage and we've got the uh, at least a, a warm feeling that this phase angle is consistent with what we're expecting. So that's what I sub little a big A is. I sub little b big B is going to be assuming, we haven't even talked about this, but assuming that it's a positive sequence, which means that it's an A, B, C sequence, then I sub little b big B would have an angle of 120 degrees behind this, and I sub little c big C would have an angle 120 degrees ahead of I sub little a big A.